This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Honey. Let's start things off this week with a little bit of Bible study. Let's rap about it. Grab a chair. Specifically, the Hebrew Bible, or the Tanakh, which features the Book of Jonah. In it, the prophet Jonah is commanded by God to go to the city of Nineveh to basically warn them that God is going to smite them all if they don't get their act together. Of course, this is all a bit overwhelming for Jonah, so he instead decides to ghost God and just get as far away as possible. He gets on a boat, but then while at sea, the weather gets real bad, and everyone else in the boat, they eventually figure out this is Jonah's fault, mm -hmm. and they throw him overboard. And then Jonah is then immediately swallowed by a whale, and he spends three days inside of that whale praying to God that, okay, fine, I'll do that thing that you asked me to do, and I'm really sorry that I ghosted you like that. And then the whale spits him out, and he, he goes and does the thing. How does this have anything to do with Pinocchio? Because this happens in Pinocchio, right? Does it? I think. I don't know. Maybe I'm crossing my children's movie wires. You might but, uh... Anyways, the idea of a person being eaten by a whale is pretty absurd, even by biblical standards. And, you know, and there was a Mountain Dew commercial in the early 2000s that had a whale in it. There, people get eaten by a whale as well. Remember. Now, it's, it, look, eating people is just something that whales don't actually do, despite yeah. it being uh, uh, an entertainment... Uh, Thing throughout history. Yeah. And the Bible is entertainment. It's just so, not, uh, no one's afraid of getting eaten by a whale when they go in the ocean. They're afraid of sharks. Yeah. Well, they might have a fear of being eaten by a whale, but it's irrational for the most Unless part. Unless we're talking about orcas, which are menaces. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, for, for all the pedants, uh, pedants out there, uh, you're right. The actual Hebrew translation says that Jonah was eaten by a large fish. Whatever. It's still ridiculous. No one says Jonah and the large fish. They say Jonah and the whale. Yeah. But even ridiculous things happen every once in a blue moon. And this past week, a guy had got himself literally eaten by a whale. This actually happened. And he somehow lived to tell the tale. Um, okay. Well, not literally swallowed, but he was completely inside of a humpback whale's closed mouth while it was trying to swallow its mouth's contents. And that was for long enough that he was convinced that this is how he was going to die. Uh, let's read from the local Cape Cod Times. Cape Cod Times here. We got a hot scoop on a story. It was a real wicked pisser. <laughs> a little before 8 a.m. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. A little before 8 a.m. Friday, veteran lobster diver Michael Packard entered the water for his second dive of the day. His vessel, the Ja and J. J and J, it was off Herring Cove Beach and surrounded by a fleet of boats catching striped bass. The water temperature was a balmy 60 degrees and the visibility around 20 feet. Licensed commercial lobster divers literally pluck lobsters off the sandy bottom and as Packard, 56, dove down Friday morning, he saw schools of sand lances and stripers swimming by. The ocean food chain was in full evidence, but about 10 feet from the bottom, Packard suddenly knew what it truly felt like to be a part of that chain. In something truly biblical, Packard was swallowed whole by a humpback whale. It continues, <laughs> All of a sudden, I felt this huge shove, and the next thing I knew, it was completely black, Packard recalled Friday afternoon following his release from Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis. I could sense I was moving, and I could feel the whale squeezing with the muscles in its mouth. Initially, Packard thought he was inside a great white shark, but he couldn't feel any teeth, and he hadn't suffered any obvious wounds. It quickly dawned on him that he had been swallowed by a whale. I was completely inside. It was completely black, Packard said. I thought to myself, there's no way I'm getting out of here. I'm done. I'm dead. All I could think of was my boys. They're 12 and 15 years old. Outfitted with scuba gear, he struggled, and the whale began shaking its head so that Packard could tell he didn't like it. He estimated he was in the whale for 30 to 40 seconds before the whale finally surfaced. I saw light, and he started throwing his head side to side. The next thing I knew, I was outside in the water, said Packard, who lives in Wellfleet. Um, Ugh, what is this? It's a shame he didn't have a candle to light while he was in there. Yeah. That's how it happens. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's a shame he didn't have any explosives to blow his way out. Also, like, not trying to downplay this guy's story, but when you're in a traumatic situation like that, 10 seconds probably felt like 30 to 40 seconds. Yeah, I mean, who's to say? Yeah. Uh, I mean, any seconds completely inside of a whale's And, and a living is, animal that can, is big enough to, to yeah. have you in its mouth. Horrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I don't care if it's five seconds, ten seconds. Miss me with that shit. Yeah. So, yeah, in case you need a reminder on just how big humpback whales are, they're 45 to 52 feet long or 13 to 16 meters and can weigh up to 88,000 pounds or 40,000 kilograms. They're so big and heavy that any time they end up beached, dead or alive... 
it's a huge ordeal getting them out of there and back into the water. It so takes. dynamite it was. <laughs> so <laughs> 70 cases. Just that it. one time. I think that was like a sperm whale. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you don't hear about them using dynamite since then mm -hmm. because it uh, creates Bring, more problems. Big mess. Big mess. Uh, but yeah, even uh, I saw this whale rescue in like South America where they had like construction equipment. Like it was like a full 24 hour process of just trying they're, to get this whale they're back massive. out in the water. Yeah. Yeah. And when they're dead, it smells absolutely awful there was a whale that beached itself in la like five years ago right before fourth of july weekend and everyone was freaking out they're like we gotta get this fucking whale off the beach before fourth of july weekend it's gonna ruin it it was like the movie jaws except without the jaws yeah but they, it hates our freedom everyone was just like this is gonna ruin fourth of july yeah. we're gonna lose so much income to the local economy <laughs> so the mayor said open it up yeah we're gonna open up that whale and kids are gonna play inside of it mm. Mm. uh but yeah humpback whale's mouth can easily fit an entire human being inside of it. Mm -hmm. Bigger than a New York apartment. Yeah. <laughs> These days, yes. <laughs> and that said, a humpback whale's diet consists of just small fish and crustaceans, which it catches by just sort of opening up its big old, big gullet mouth and swimming in the general direction of its prey. Uh, it, it, when its mouth is open wide, it can't even see. So it's just sort of like going for it. So yeah. It sounds like this was just an unfortunate goof. And uh, that's what the experts are saying as well. Uh, more from the Cape Cod Times. Based on what was described, this would have to be a mistake and an accident on the part of the humpback, said Juke Robbins, director of humpback whale studies at the Center for Coastal Studies in Provincetown. Humpbacks are not aggressive animals, particularly towards humans, she said. The humpback was described by Mayo as being medium-sized, Michael Packard said, and Robbins suspects it was a juvenile feeding on sand lance. When a humpback opens its mouth to feed, it billows out like a parachute, blocking the animal's forward vision, which is why so many become entangled in fishing gear in their mouths and jaws, said Robbins. Even so, incidents of feeding humpbacks injuring swimmers and divers, especially instances of swallowing them, are so exceedingly rare as to be non-existent, Robbins says. The esophagus on non-toothed whales is too small to actually swallow a human, but they could wrap their mouth around a large object and then spit it out. Robin said that unlike toothed whales, such as orcas, baleen whales that filter out small schooling fish do not explore or cause injuries with their mouths. They generally use their tail. It is not something I have heard happening before, Robin said of the incident on Friday. So many things would have had to happen to end up in the path of a feeding whale. It's uh, the, the more horrifying possible outcome since the throat can't even... Can't even deep throat a human being with that mm. whale throat. Yeah. But what if he got stuck in the throat and then the whale choked to death, Boat died, dead. and the whale floats to the bottom and he's just stuck there, stuck inside the dead whale. Well, throat. he would be dead. He would die eventually, and then they'd both well, be dead. Or or someone would have to and go down they, there with dynamite and get him out of that whale. They'd wash on shore, and then everyone would be horrified when yeah. they cut it open and find a, a human body inside Jesus of it. Jesus Christ. But, uh, yeah. Good it's thing like, that didn't happen. You know, it's like your uncle. You guys all go out to the buffet. He eats a little too fast and gets a bone down there and has to hawk it up. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, if you if you look at this incident from the whale's perspective, it sounds like this was just sort of like having a bug fly into your mouth yeah, yeah. While, while you're eating dinner. Or, like, getting, like, a bone or, like, or like oh, choking God, on God, what the fuck is this? Get it out! That's what oh. I've always heard because it is, an, it, an ir, up until now, an irrational fear of being swallowed by a whale because, like, you've seen things, people on kayaks and they come up, like, right next to them because they're feeding. Yeah. You can tell a whale's going to come up when fish start spattering on the top or... Because they, they're they geniuses and they underwater yeah. they create, like, a little tornado that traps the fish all in one place. So it looks like a nightmare. But I've, I have always heard the thing about how it can't, technically swallow you yeah. because it's esophagus. They're just, I mean, they're clumsy. They're huge. It's like, it's like you trying to, like, if, it's, just, it's like you trying to drive a boat. Yeah. If you're not an expert at driving a boat, it's a huge fucking thing that turns very slowly in yeah. a lot of cases. But what, yeah, so yeah, you do hear sometimes people are paddle boarding. They'll get knocked off when a whale comes up. Whoops. Yeah. Uh, there's been a or few smacked with the tail. A few yeah. close calls where whales almost landed on people when they jumped out. There was one recently where a uh, whale uh, landed on a. I think they're okay, but it was in Australia. A uh, whale breached and landed on an actual, like a decent sized boat, not like a kayak, and injured uh, the two people Jesus on board Christ. and like broke the boat. Is the whale okay? I think the whale's probably fine. It was probably just like, what the fuck was that? Holy shit. What yeah. are you doing out here? This, this is my guy turf. was payback for yeah. hurting the other whale. Yeah. Stay out of my territory. Nature is back to being balanced. Nature is healing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it wasn't fun for either party involved. Not Michael Packard nor the whale, I yeah. would imagine. I don't think the whale had fun. No. Mm -hmm. uh, as for Michael Packard, though, this is just the latest, apparently, in a long line of crazy stories from his life. Uh, getting briefly eaten by a whale 
pretty scary, but maybe not as scary as 10 years ago when Packard was a passenger on a small plane that crashed in the jungle of Costa Rica, killing the pilot, co-pilot, and passenger, leaving him and four others stranded for two nights before being rescued. That's uh, just another thing that happened in this man's life. Stay away from this guy. Yeah, he's bad luck. With people that are interesting, stay away. He, he also said in a Reddit AMA that he did, uh, or rather his son did, while well, asking him questions. But yeah. he, he said that he uh, found a dead body once while he was lobster diving. Be <laughs> <So, laughs> uh, Yeah, I don't know. Uh, also, I mean, lobster diving just as a career, it is just by its very nature one of the more dangerous jobs yeah. out there. Things can go very wrong on the seafloor. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said that he's one of the last guys in his town that's still doing it. Everyone else is just using the damn traps. I fear, set it and forget it. I fear and respect the ocean. I don't I don't like messing around with it. No. Me and you went uh, shark swimming, and that was, I think, the craziest thing I've ever we done. We didn't even ocean. see a shark, but the whole town was like, this sucks. Yeah. I hate this. <laughs> well, first of all, it was very choppy. Yeah. Uh, second of all, there might have been sharks around. Yeah, they could The water, been. you couldn't there see no like a foot in front of the water. Yeah, there could so, have been a shark right there. I didn't like that. No, that was... Uh, but we were the only ones that did it. Yeah, there was a crew of like 15 people. We were the only ones. Yeah, everyone else said no. Mm-hmm. Or they were puking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, this guy, Michael, he's got the ultimate whale of a tail now to ensure that he never has to pay for another drink ever again. Yeah. Like, top that. Yeah. But all the other stories are kind of making me suspicious. Would anyone see him get eaten by this whale? Yeah. Okay, good. Because he, uh, the way this lobster diving shit works is you have to, it has to be a two-man job. Yeah, so you the, don't get lost. You yeah, the guy, up, the guy up top is watching your bubbles to make sure you don't drift out to sea, which is like... A I want to hear the story concern. from that guy's perspective. So yeah, that guy, he's just like, yeah, he, he was down there, then I saw a ton of bubbles, and then a few seconds later, a fucking whale popped out, yeah. a body <laughs> launched out of it, covered yeah. in whale spit. Yeah. Disgusting. And, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if he was alone, it, 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 that... It'd be the most insane thing that you could possibly happen to you, and no one would believe you. Yeah. You're like, okay, buddy, eat my yeah. whale. Oh, you just like he crash landed in Costa Rica and had yeah. to survive for two days. This well, guy and all of his stories. Yeah, he's, got, he's got stories. Mm-hmm. Anyways, moving on to our next story. Uh, if the idea of being stuck inside a whale's mouth makes you want to piss your pants, well, that's actually pretty normal. Now, what's not normal is wanting to piss your pants because you like how it looks. Consider me Miles Davis. <laughs> Uh, and what's extra not normal is wanting to, wanting pants that are intentionally designed to make it look like you've permanently pissed your pants. Uh, the most not normal thing of all would be starting a company specifically catering to that clientele. Seems like a waste of money and time. Mm-hmm. But that's uh, apparently a thing that has happened. Introducing Wet Pants Denim, whose ads on Instagram advertise a wet look with a dry feel. Who is this for? Uh, so if we head over to wetpantsdenim.com to get some answers about what the hell's going on here, we end up walking away with even more questions. Only aesthetic without the discomfort. Wet Pants Denim delivers the appearance of authentic urinary incontinence without the commonly experienced discomfort. Wet look, dry feel. Okay, well, uh, let's just click on the uh, that little learn more button mm-hmm. so we can learn more. Okay, yeah, so up top here, we've got a collage of images featuring various celebrities and normies rocking the uh, piss jeans look in public. Uh, Some of these are obviously photoshopped. The Adam Sandler pic, though, was real. That one's from Billy Madison. Yeah, if pissing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. Uh, And also that Liam Neeson pic is 100% real because Liam Neeson has a long history of pissing his pants in public, presumably while extremely drunk, but nobody's ever really gotten firm answers about this, but there are a lot of... Photos of Liam Neeson with piss stains Look, on his pants. Liam Neeson, very cool. I mean, if anyone can get away with it, it's him. Do they got any Fergie pants? <laughs> I forgot Fergie pissed her pants. She peed her pants on stage. She did. She nothing was way, way ahead of the curve on this Look, trend. nothing wrong with it. Everyone has an accident now and again. So, don't hate us for mm-hmm. just pointing it out. Anyways, underneath those images is some text. There is clearly a wet pants movement. Celebrities, influencers, and everyday individuals alike are feigning incontinence in search of the wet pants look. Here at Wet Pants Denim, we're delivering an identical style without the need to feel uncomfortable. Our jeans are individually procured for each order and hand dyed, ensuring that every pair is one of a kind. We also make hats. (laughs) Do the hats have piss on them? Uh, no. I wish they did. Yeah. Uh, Below that, we see some examples of their products. Yeah, those... Definitely look like jeans that someone pissed in, although the white jeans with bright yellow piss stains are maybe a little extreme. I've been drinking Airborne all week just to make sure this piss stands out. Yeah, and uh, this is all just raising more questions. Luckily, there's a questions button, so uh, why not? Yeah. 
What is the purpose of this? Why are you doing this? There are two key issues with the traditional urinary incontinence aesthetic. Number one, wearing wet pants is uncomfortable. Number two, when the wet mark dries or the garment is washed, the stain is almost always gone for good. Wet pants denim was created to produce jeans that solve both of these issues. <laughs> As such, we are providing comfort and permanence to a market that is completely overlooked by traditional fashion houses. What is your target customer? Wet pants denim is made for everyone. Our denim products can be produced in all sizes and styles. If you are comfortable in your own skin and not afraid to make a bold statement, we have pants for you. Will you make the jeans with a brown or red stain? We do not offer a style oh. like this for our jeans, nor do we expect to in the future. They That's don't expect disgusting. to. What are you doing? They don't expect to, but if the demand's there. Excuse me, how dare you? This is a pissed jeans company, and you're bringing in period blood and shit. Great band, pissed jeans, though. Yeah? Yeah. That's a band? I believe one of our friends was in their music video. Daryl. Right. Anyways, I like that the whole thing they point out is like, just the reason these exist is that so that people don't feel uncomfortable yeah. completely sidestepping the uh mental uncomfort that yeah. anyone with a pair of pissed pants the thing everyone hates about pissed pants is how wet they are we solved that problem no it's embarrassment <laughs> you walk in and you're like yeah i pissed my pants sounds like you're just not confident in your own skin or in your own piss look all right so we're obviously still pretty confused about why this exists or even that it does in fact exist and thankfully someone at mel magazine dug deeper into this and actually did so two years ago when wet pants denim first started running its ads on Instagram. Yeah, it turns out this isn't even breaking news. It's been around for a while, and it's just currently going through a second wave of people asking what the hell is going on here. Uh, anyways, in that article, the writer reached out to wet pants denim's anonymous CEO about who these pants are really for, and they replied, quote, some folks have a fetish wherein they pee their pants because they like the way it looks. Oh, okay. There's an obvious downside to this, though, in that you're inevitably wet for hours. I wanted to provide a solution to those underserved consumers so that they no longer had to be wet and could have a sustained wet pants look as long as they please. All right. Yeah, so there it is. It's a fetish thing. Th hey, that... This is Tommy Wiseau owns his company, right? He's already got the pants company. Why not make with the wet pants? <laughs> I, I could be. Big if true. Yeah. But, yeah, the, the fetish aspects like that. Of course this is a fucking fetish. Everybody likes when they have pay pants. Yeah. You know, I go through my life, I'm wearing a mask. A mask of someone who doesn't enjoy pissing his pants. And it's nice mm -hmm. to finally be able to live my truth through these pissed jeans. Yeah. Great band. Anyway, as for whether this is even a real thing, uh, Wet Pants Denim sent that writer a pair to try out for themselves, <laughs> and uh, the wet pants apparently were exactly as advertised. It they looks had, like I pissed my pants. Yeah, the uh, wet look, wet look, but the dry feel. Yeah. Uh, the writer tried going out in public with the jeans on to see if there's maybe, I don't know, some sort of boost in confidence that comes with rock walking around looking like you pissed yourself, but not having not actually pissed yourself, and apparently for this writer, no, there wasn't. It, they just, they hated everything about it. Yeah. Um... But anyways, if this somehow appeals to you, uh, the pants cost $75 on Wet Pants Denim's website. Uh, if that's a little bit steep. For just $30, they will pissify a pair of pants that you send to them. Maybe your favorite pair of pants that's just been missing that one special element. Yeah. Uh, and if you would like to purchase a Wet Pants Denim gift card, you can do so via PissCoin, Wet Pants Denim's <laughs> very own digital currency with the value of one PissCoin tied to the value of one pair of piss jeans. So even if the pair of the, that's pretty the, unique. The, the cost of the piss jeans goes up, the one piss coin will always be equal to that. Yeah, that's so, cool. So, uh, yeah, new, new currency. Everything's tokenized these New days. token just dropped. Yeah. Moving on now from piss to shit. Here's some Hollywood entertainment news for you. <sighs> Deep breath. Stop eating the sandwich. Put it down. Okay. Production on the NBA... If you were eating during the piss pants story, I, I put it away. Piss, I can handle. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Disgusting. Production on the NBC reality competition series Ultimate Slip and Slide, which is set to air uh, following the Tokyo Summer Olympics, has been shut down due to what the news outlet, uh, The Wrap, has been described as an explosive diarrhea outbreak. From their reporting... The upcoming TV competition series, adapted from the classic backyard water slide by Whammo, has shut down indefinitely after up to 40 crew members fell violently ill during production on a remote ranch in Simi Valley, California, the rap has learned. According to a person with knowledge of the production, the outbreak of awful explosive diarrhea left people collapsing on set and being forced to run into porta potties. Uh, and I know you can picture it. Slip and slide, yeah, explosive it's, diarrhea. It's perfect. I have to assume that 
at some point. Whoa! There, there was shit all over these slip and slides. Yeah, just... It, like it's like an afterburner, and, and that the the slip and slides. At least when I was a kid, had a a, a pool at the end. There'd be a bump at the end, and yeah. then a pool. So then you'd splash into it as like a final splash. Uh, so that I assume yeah. would be uh, you know pretty disgusting for anyone Someone that would... just go on their stomach and like out the back. <sighs> yeah, they use it to propel themselves, yeah. and then they go into even more Get an extra extra little bit of speed, and then it gets all over the crew, and that's how it spreads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, for all your zoomers out there with your cell phones and your video games. Slip and slide is, it's literally a long sheet of plastic that you put down in your yard and you get it wet and it allows you to run and slide on it like it's a horizontal water slide. This is how young people used to enjoy themselves in the summer before the internet. Yeah. Um, we used so. to get, uh, when, when uh, hurricanes would come in Florida, we used to go to like uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and all chip in and get a gigantic tarp yeah. and put it out in the park and get like soap and water and it would rain. We yeah. just yeah, slide for like Woo! a quarter mile. It yeah. was great. Now, but just make sure there's no rocks under it. Yeah, you got to be really careful. Uh, yeah, you hit a rock. Do it on a soft surface with no sharp objects. Check everything below. Make sure there's no rocks. It's an easy way to get hurt. Yeah. Now, so that's what a slip and slide is. It's unclear how exactly they've managed to create an entire TV show around the slip and slide. Racing? I'm... Um, what is clear, though, is that the affected cast and crew members tested positive for the parasite Giardia, mm -hmm. which was also found just all over the show's set. So that's why they had to shut it down. My cat got that, and uh, I, lo I, I love my cat, uh, but uh, there was a moment where I was like, um, you might, I, we might need to put you up for adoption yeah, against diarrhea is, everywhere. It was the worst, like, three months ever. And it, like, to keep, to get it to get rid of the uh, Giardia, is what, what we call it, or Giardia, or however you say it, like, you have to deep clean Everything in your apartment. Yeah, every the day. Bacteria is on because the, if it gets everything. anywhere and then the cat touches it again, it starts over all over again. Oh it was a nightmare. So I don't even know how this passed to humans, but I don't want it to get anywhere fucking near it. And it's obvious that it spreads crazily. It's like so. the bed, it's like the bed bugs of uh, diarrhea. Yeah, burn, but you don't want to mess with this. Burn stuff. the whole house down. Yeah. Anyway, fans of the show's hosts Bobby Moynihan uh -huh. and Ron Funches oh. can rest easy with the knowledge that both of those men managed to avoid the same explosive shitty phase of their coworkers, or at least that's the story that they're telling. If this is like Wipeout, I think that the hosts are rarely there, like the main hosts in person. Yeah. Like they, it's like most extreme challenge. Like yeah. they kind of watch the footage. They bring them in after the fact and just yeah. like shoot for a couple mm -hmm. days to save money. Could yeah. be. Yeah. But they got yeah. all the like Wipeout, they got that Holy Moly miniature golf show now and slip and slide, like... I don't know. I guess people are into it. I, th this is the thing. This is millennials turning 40. Yeah. These are the shows you get. Yeah. Like, what did you guys do when you were kids? Let's make that into a show. Yeah, we used to hit each other with pool noodles and slip and slide mm -hmm. and play mini golf. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. We're bringing it back. This is going to be a batting cages show. <laughs> Every show, the the grand prize is a all-you-can-eat dinner at Pizza Hut. <laughs> Your own personal pan pizza. <laughs> yeah. You don't even uh, have to read a book. Well, anyways, that sounds terrible. Yeah. And what a, if you could pick the worst set for this to break out on, it's definitely one that involves everyone going through the same water face first. Yeah. Also, in Simi Valley in June. It's, it's just, just scorching. Like scorching hot. Yeah. Just miserable outside. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, everyone's got diarrhea. There's not enough toilets. And everyone's you're sitting in a, a porta potty in 100 degree weather yeah. that other people are just blasting. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it's like being in a porta potty at a festival. The worst place on earth. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of explosions, it happened again, folks. God damn it. Do we even have to say what happened? You, you already, you know, you know. You you know. know. An explosive device used in a gender reveal party has sparked a wildfire. It's sad and it's dumb, but we see this happen every other week at this point. What's new, though, is that this very American phenomenon ha of endangering people's lives for the purpose of revealing whether an unborn child is male or female has spread internationally. We have exported our stupidity to Canada. Come on, you guys are better than this. Yeah, and aren't you supposed to all be indoors right now? Come on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'll recall that previously back in April, a gender reveal stunt in Mexico led to a plane crash that killed two people. Mm -hmm. um, so pff, North America is... <laughs> Doing the gender reveal. Yeah. Uh, luckily, this latest Canadian gender reveal incident didn't escalate the way that uh, some of the gender reveal wildfires have gone down here in the States, which yeah. is to say horribly. Uh, the Canada fire had only managed to reach the size of about like a football field before firefighters were able to put it out, which is very lucky considering 
how out of control the gender reveal fires in Arizona and California have previously gotten, mm -hmm. uh, causing just millions and millions of dollars in damage, uh, even leading to the death of a firefighter, a the one hero. in California did. What a fucking infuriating way to die. Mm -hmm. So please, Canada, Mexico, rest of the world, I know you're watching this. Stop before it's too late. You do not want this. This is an American thing. This is an American thing, and you don't want this. This yeah. is just a symptom of a, a much deeper uh, disease affecting the brains of people here. And you don't want this shit in your country. Stop it before it gets Stop started. it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Speaking of places that aren't the United States of America, uh, we've been getting all sorts of news from Mars lately, thanks to NASA's Perseverance rover, and more recently, a rover that China landed on the red planet. That's easy to take for granted how crazy all this is, but uh, here's a Mars story that's genuinely surprising uh, from the New York Times. Fields of watermelons found on Mars, police say. Authorities say rise of fruit aliens is to blame for glut of outer space watermelons. The FBI declined to comment on reports of watermelons raining down, but confirmed that kiwis have been intercepted. This story is terribly boring. Watermelon tastes good, police say. Wow. So that's, um, wow. Pretty insane news. Great job to reporter Joe Schmo for getting the scoop on that. But uh, what, what, okay, what's, what's going on here? Well, just minutes after the article was published and automatically boosted on social media, <laughs> It was replaced with a page saying, this article was published in error. And it would seem that the article is, in fact, not true. Fake news. It was actually a fake article used in testing out the Times publishing system, which was never intended to be seen by the public, or at least that's what they want you to think. Yeah. Don't tell them about the watermelons on Mars. It's uh, not as if they couldn't just type the typical, like, lorem ipsum whatever. Yeah. I My theory is that someone put this in their database, like, 15 years ago with just, like, I don't know, June... June 8th, 2021. That'll never happen. Well, I'll be gone by then. Yeah. And just, yeah. And it finally dropped. But, um, yeah. I, guess, I love that, like, I immediately just, like, why are the police on this? Yeah. <laughs> like, in Mars. Yeah. We got not only our watermelons and kiwis and aliens on Mars, mm -hmm. but also the FBI and the local police are on Mars. Yeah. Dealing with this. And, the, you know, you tell it's inaccurate because the FBI has just been telling everyone everything about aliens uh, yeah. recently. So they wouldn't hold back on this. Yeah, there's watermelons up there. Yeah, sure. And it's raining kiwis. Yep. What are you going to What are you gonna do? You better get Literally, up. Literally. Go up there and get them before the aliens do. You, Joe Q America. What are you going to do? It's raining watermelons on Mars. Yeah. Are you going to Are you gonna go out and have a fucking hot boy summer? Or are you going to sit inside and worry about the watermelons on Mars? Because you can only have one. Yeah. Yeah. Like, aliens exist. What are you going What are you gonna do about it? You're not gonna do shit. About what are you it. gonna do? You're gonna make up for lost time because we lost a year of our lives by going out, getting drunk, and getting thrown out of a baseball game? Or are yeah. you gonna be worrying about the aliens yeah. zooming around over the San Diego coast? You can't do anything about it, guys. We're too far gone. Nothing matters anymore. It doesn't. We got to make up for lost time. Stop worrying about Mars. Yeah. Even if there are raining water. Worry mountains. about your damn self. <laughs> That's why uh, Bezos and. Uh, Musk are trying to get there. Yeah. Whoever controls the watermelons controls the future. The watermelons up there, they're as red as hell. The spice melons. They're not like this bullshit you buy at Vons. This mm -hmm. has been like GMO'd to death. It has no flavor, no essence. The watermelons up there on Mars, they're huge. And seedless. <laughs> See, they're seedless. Naturally seedless. They're, yeah. they're, you know, it's like candy. Delicious. It's like candy from the earth. Yeah. You haven't had a watermelon Kiwis, like this as far as the eye can see. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah. Perfectly ripe. You don't. It's not like with regular kiwis. You buy yeah. them and you're like, oh, they're too hard. I'll give it a couple days, and then you come back and it's just mush and it tastes like shit. You know how these looks, kiwis are always ready. You to know go. how it looks when people eat fruit in animes. That's how it tastes on Mars. Yeah. You got to try it. But what are you gonna do? You can go to the beach, or you're gonna worry about watermelons on Mars. Go to the beach. Go to the beach. Get in the fight. Anyway, before we get to the headlines, half of the show. This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. Mm -hmm. You're ready to get back outside, but your closet may say otherwise. So get some much needed style updates with the help of Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There's no uh, subscription required, so try Stitch Fix once or just set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces that you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. 
Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. So get started today at stitchfix.com weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com weird. And this episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online. We've all seen that promo code field taunting us at the checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. So here's how it works. You imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I went on a major sports merchandise website and bought a uh, uh, Los Angeles Dodgers World Series Dodger dog bobblehead. Oh, hell yeah. um, I was bored. Uh, my wife was out of town. I was on the couch and I said, you know what? I deserve it. Yeah. I deserve how this bobblehead. Did, how much did Honey save you on that? Uh, I got free shipping and like a $5 thing towards another item. Oh, damn. Yeah. Wow. So it basically paid for itself. Uh, pretty much. Uh, I believe it was like $55. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't even drunk sober, so I yeah. don't even have an excuse. I was just like, now here's some merchandise for me. Yeah. yeah. This is just what the house needs. Yeah. Anyway, Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings on products like bobbleheads and, and so much more. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show. We would never recommend something we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. Get yourself a bobblehead. You deserve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, can, you can just touch its head anytime. It's just there gone. Yep. The whole thing shakes with this one. It's not. Oh, it's it's wow. more of a whole bobble dog. So is it an anthropomorphic hot dog? Yeah, he's all smiling. I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Does his penis look like a, just a small He does not dog? have... It's not a, it's, he doesn't have a penis. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so how, how does he fuck? Uh, he squirts mustard out. Okay. Yeah. It's disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gross. And, and he's holding the World Series trophy. Oh. <laughs> Congratulations. He gets a ring. Yeah. Yeah, he just slides it over the dog. The real winner. The famous Dodger dog. Uh, yeah. Well, local lore, but the uh, they, repla Dodger. they replaced the uh, company that manufactured the Dodger dogs this year. What? Yeah, I know. So You used to be able to buy them at, like, the supermarket. It used to be Farmer John. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the new company, but... Uh, oh, my God. It's horrible. Yeah. So, look at me. I'm like a scab. Yeah. Mm, you well. are. Anyways, uh, let's move on to the, the weirdest headlines of the week, starting with, a woman who got stuck in a chair while making fetish content had to be freed with the jaws of life. And, yeah, this happened all on TikTok. Yeah. And she, like... I, I, you know, you hear this, and you're like, how, did this, how do you get stuck in a chair? She literally, like, I have no... Because she showed it on TikTok, and it's like, yeah, I don't know how the fuck you got in there, but there's no way you're getting out. Apparently, uh, I don't know if the story there changed. Is, there is a fetish. People like seeing women get stuck in chairs. So that's the thing was the story, at least afterwards, was that she was demonstrating what the fetish looked like, what people would get off to. Yeah. So she got herself stuck in something, and it was a chair, because she probably just assumed that she would be able to easily slide out of a yeah. chair afterwards. But no. And there was, like, multiple steps to the process of getting her out. Like, obviously, you don't bring out the jaws well, They brought of out the first. bolt cutters first, yeah. and yeah. it's like, no, nah, it's not going to work. And then, yeah, and then they brought out the fucking hydraulic-powered jaws of life, which are capable of, like, yeah. ripping a car door off its Yeah, engine. meanwhile, there's a guy across town who's literally breathing his last breath, just, <laughs> yeah. like, hanging inside of a car. Yeah. It's like, sorry, we were busy with the fetish model on TikTok. Yeah. I mean, it's nice the paramedics have some fun ones every once in a while. Yeah. Not, there's no, you know, there's no big rush here. It's just the lady's stuck with it. She's stuck in a chair. Yeah. She's going to do what we got to do. Pretty chill day out doing paramedic stuff. Especially if one of those paramedics has a uh, stuck fetish. Yeah. It's like, oh, man. Uh, these bolt cutters That's just aren't fetish. working. Oh, I gotta go out to the oh, truck for no, a little while. Oh, we can't get you out of the chair. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Stuck, are you? Mm. 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 Well, let's not rush to get it to free her. All right. Ah, next headline. Joints for jabs. Washington State turns to marijuana giveaways to encourage residents to get vaccinated. Uh, cool. Hey, everyone up in Washington State, enjoy this. If for some reason you are... Uh, a weed smoker who has yet to get vaccinated. Maybe you're just, uh, you know, you smoke. Yeah, I don't want to go outside. Today. I think there's probably a lot of crossover. It's something I find interesting about this. So the way it works is you actually, they have uh, that you can make vaccination appointment at the dispensary. 
Oh. It's like, you know, they're there certain hours of the day or whatever. And so you get vaxxed at the dispensary and then you get a free joint. Um, cool. But I feel like a lot of, like, people who are into weed also have, like, really fucking stupid, like, health opinions. Yeah, I yeah. am. Well, because like, the, the weed would cure it's everything. The only, the only drug I need. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, it was like, I, I, I don't know if it's fucking true or not, but uh, there was a big thing going on that like weed like would prevent uh, yeah. the the virus from like sticking to your lungs. I don't know if there's any effect on it at all. Well, I, there uh, was actually some weird truth to that, but I don't know if they really looked into it further. But that that was like that was based on actual yeah. That's, what, that's what I'm reason. saying. Like I don't know. It sounds but, like uh, yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, and I think look. Obviously, most people who smoke weed are normal, but there's definitely a lot of people, probably like a disproportionately high amount of people who work in dispensaries who have like absolute fucking quack beliefs yeah. about healthcare and specifically the vaccine. So it's got to be a little bit awkward. Yeah, I will say uh, they are they're, they are putting vaccination sites in more uh, places of convenience. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but I will say that I have uh, heard, experienced, and read online the uh, there's a you know we assume that hey look they're doing a lottery now people could potentially win some money if you get vaccinated like it's all good the more people get vaccinated the better uh, a lot of people out there uh, see this as proof that there is something nefarious going on because why would the government pay you why if this vaccine's so good yeah why would the government need to uh, trick people or or pay people to go get it. Because we don't want another wave of the pandemic. Yes. You fucking assholes. Yes. People are like incapable of thinking beyond just like the pure, government's purely to individual personally over paranoid yeah. terms. It's yeah. like this the whole reason, you know, we've, we've been having this argument since the beginning of the pandemic. It's like, well, I don't want to go inside. Well, if you if everyone goes inside, this can end in three weeks. But I don't want to. Yeah. Don't tell me what to do. You should really go inside. Oh, well, now I'm getting suspicious. That well, why don't you guys this, all uh, go outside and get inside and I'll stay outside. No, that's yeah, not how it works. Uh, but, um, yeah, we're, those people, the ones the ones you're talking about, they're beyond hell. Yes. Forget about them. They're not, they're, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Man paints massive welcome to Perth sign on roof of building next to Sydney Airport. I love this. This is, well, ba- this is actually- international travelers would be like, what? Uh, okay, whatever. I'm in Australia. That's all it that matters. <laughs> but Australians would probably freak out. Cause- yeah, because it's like landing in Florida and it's saying welcome to Los Angeles. Yeah, Perth and Sydney are not close. No. Yeah. Perth is actually like super fucking isolated, like way more than I even thought. It is basically an island. It, it, it's like it's the west coast of Australia. It, but it's like the only metro area in all of Western Australia. Yeah. The closest city of like any size is like 1,500 miles away. Yeah. It's crazy. It'd be like if LA was the only city on the west coast of the US. I've been to Perth. I don't remember much of it. It looked like a city. Yeah, I mean, Australia's fine, I guess. I've never been, but... It's nice. I liked uh, Brisbane, Sydney, uh, Melbourne. Perth, I don't really remember Melbourne? much. I was there for like a day. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, this, this is actually... The, this guy stole his joke from a guy... The who, guy in uh, the States. Yeah, some... Yeah. It's from in, like, the 70s. It's still up there, but some guy in uh, Milwaukee put, like, Welcome to Cleveland on top of a building right yeah. next to the airport. It might have been Chicago As or a something goof. like that. Yeah. I think it was Milwaukee and Cleveland, okay. but uh, it's a great goof. Good it is them. a good goof. Yeah. Yeah. Planes, another thing that, uh, like, everyone every... is acting out of pocket getting on these planes. A- every week, there's, like, three incidents. Yeah. Of some crazy shit happening. There was one recently where it turned out the guy who was freaking out and like trying to open the door and he was a uh, he was a flight steward, attendant. Yeah, I'm like, of all people who should know better, this person should know better. Yeah, I love that. Like some in that story in particular, like some random passenger got on the intercom and was like, yeah. "I need all able-bodied men to the yeah. front. We're gonna <laughs> beat the shit out of this guy." Yeah, yeah. But then just last week, someone did it on a flight to Nashville too. It's a, and yeah. people are getting caught. There was another one that was a uh, flight from L.A. to New York, and it got diverted to Detroit, and they're just wheeling some drunk lady off the plane who's just screaming the entire time. Uh, there's, I, I think two of the major airlines just said no, no more, more alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which sucks. because It's another example of a few people ruining it for everyone. Yeah. I, I mean, I never fly sober. And I know that's obviously that's a little risky if you if you see the uh, the way it works out for some of these people. But my trick is uh, I drink I drink two 16 ounce beers at the airport and then I sleep the entire flight. I get, and I wait. I get there. I, I arrive feeling great and refreshed. I uh, 
I take anti-anxiety medication. <laughs> I, I, I do. I get, look, I've flown a, a bazillion miles. I used to be fine. Yeah. Something snapped some at some point in my life, something flipped and I get terrible flight anxiety. Yeah. So, and I used to do just getting hammered, but that it's very bad for your body and I don't drink right now. So, out of van it is. Yeah. Mm. I don't like drinking on planes though for some reason. It just feels pointless. It's like It's it's just so very obvious that it's like I'm just doing this to make my feel self feel more comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation. Plus but the, you're aware of it, you're hyper aware of the it. The flight so attendants start judging work. you after beer 3. Yeah, although I've had some cool flight attendants. Uh, I think that the last like long flight I took to like, I think it was going to like New Zealand or something. Like I had this male flight attendant, and like after after, after a while, like I didn't even have to ask. He'd, he'd come by like another Cronenberg for you, and I'm like, yeah, thank you. Don't mind if I do. Yeah. Yeah. One time I was like kind of having like an anxiety attack on a plane, and the lady came by. This is, don't ever mix anti-anxiety meds. And no, alcohol. do not. One or the other. Yeah. But uh, I didn't have it then, and she came by, and she just like dropped like three of those little bottles of whiskey. <laughs> She's like, that'll calm you down. Yeah. Be yeah. nice to your flight attendants. They'll and they'll be you nice up. back. They'll, they will don't hook you up. Don't scream on a plane and try yeah. to fight people. Don't, be not, don't wear a Burger King crown. <laughs> do not wear a Burger I'm King crown. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the fucking... Oh, oh, my God. I saw... I think it was... It was Twitter or Instagram, but it was like... It was like... Listen, this might be controversial, but if this guy was on the on flight ninety three, like things might have turned out differently. Like a hero in one situation is a villain in another. Wait, the situation. Burger King guy? Yeah. Like, if this guy was on the plane with the nine eleven hijackers, he might have stopped a terror attack. Okay. We don't know. Tr- true. Somewhere we, I like I like I said, we we veered off. Coney twenty twelve happened, and we veered off the path of reality. Yeah. So Harambe, Coney twenty twelve, George from TikTok dying. It's all part of... Uh, this is all damn... If you've watched fault. the new uh, series, Loki, you'll see that uh, we've diverged from the timeline. No. Yeah. Have you seen it? No. It's good. I like it. I, I've got like 20 Marvel movies to catch up on, so uh, I'll probably never watch it. I enjoyed uh, the Vision, WandaVision. WandaVision for the first like half when I didn't need to know anything, and then once it got all Marvel, I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I never finished the new uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, but I already know what happens because everyone... Yeah. Yeah. I already you know can't. You can't. Loki's cool though, kind of a feels kind of true detective. It's, it's low key cool, yeah I guess. I low key like the show Loki. Mm. Mm-hmm. Everyone makes mistakes, says teen who karate kicked seventy four year old man to River Mercy. It's happened in the UK, obviously. Oops. Where, where the River Mercy is located, going through uh, Liverpool and Manchester. Uh, yeah, everyone makes mistakes. Those mistakes are of varying degrees of severity. Sure, well, but this, this little fucking shit. Based on what he said, it sounds like he thinks the mistake was that he just assumed it was someone who wasn't that old. Yeah, he's he was like, just like, I didn't know he was I old. didn't know he was 74. Yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't have done it. It's like, so you would have still done it if he wasn't 74? And it, yeah. like, I, I don't know if the video is still out there, but it's like literally, it's like it's like a parody of Zoomers being fucking sociopaths. It's just yeah. him and his friend being like, hey, watch this. He just runs like full speed and kicks his old man into the river yeah. and run away laughing. I mean, it's I I can't think of anyone that this shit. that this wouldn't if he kicked him would be like uh, unoffensive, like maybe like Hitler or Jake Paul. <laughs> yeah. But even that brave teen hero kicks Hitler in the river. Yeah, he Hitler came back, but a teen kicked him into the river. He it's knew fine. what to do. It's fine. He drowned. Mm-hmm. No more. No more Hitler. Yeah, we did it. Yes, but uh, yeah, um, he's a teenager, so probably a little shit. slap on the wrist. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how the teen justice is. Just boys be. being boys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Influx of peacocks that sound like babies being tortured, terrorizing Pasadena. <laughs> I love that, like, in the articles, they found this peacock expert. Because I read, like, two different articles about this. And they found this peacock expert who's, like, he keeps saying, and I love peacocks. And I hate these. They're taking over they're everything. Like, ah! yeah. yeah, well, they're not supposed to be here. Yeah. It's li- peacocks. The reason there's fucking wild peacocks in Los Angeles is because rich people for the last hundred years have just been buying peacocks and having them imported from like Asia yeah. to just have peacocks living on their property as a status symbol. Mm-hmm. And just like, and now they're just all over the fucking place. They they stand in the street. They won't get out of the way of a car. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. And they will they will attack you. They are very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. So sucks for everyone in and, Pasadena. Uh, yeah, and they they when they scream, they I don't know if I'd say they sound like a baby being tortured, but it does sound like a human 
just screaming in bloody The East agony. Coast has cicadas. We have screaming peacocks. Yeah, brood X peacocks. They come out. <laughs> Every 17 games. years, there's a billion peacocks. <laughs> yeah. You have to watch out for oh, them. Oh, that would be insane. Oh, my gosh. Jeff Bezos once claimed child tax credit, even though his net worth was $18 billion. That's how the rich stay rich. Yeah, you know, I got a tax credit from the, for the kids. And this was like a ProPublica report. They got their hands on some... Uh, Confidential IRS documents. And yeah. Now a bunch a bunch of fucking people in Congress are like, we're going to get to the bottom of how this data got leaked. And it's like, why don't you get to the bottom of how these fucking rich people are paying fucking nothing in taxes? Yeah. Why don't you get to the bottom of that, dicks? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it was all just all the tricks. And it's not even tricks. It's just the tax system. They're is, doing so legally. Yeah, the yeah. tax system is set up so that once you reach a certain level of wealth, as long as a certain amount of your assets are in the stock market or in other investments... You never have to pay taxes because, like, they're not. You're gonna realize lose, they're yeah. not realized gains. Yeah. Which for look for common Americans, normal people, that is a really good thing because that is how I know that millennials and Zoomers have kind of been shafted by this, and we don't have a lot of. Uh, I would say a decent portion of millennials or Zoomers have little to no retirement savings. Yeah. But how it's supposed to work is that traditionally. Your parents had things called 401ks and IRAs yeah. that they would put money into. And then obviously you're not going to get taxed on that every year unless it's a Roth IRA, different story. You're not going to get taxed on the gains from that because that would be stupid. Yeah. You get taxed when you realize when you it, it and out. you pull it out. Yeah. So it's set up to work for people to not work until they're 100 years old. Yeah. But the problem is, is that it's taken advantage of by uh, people who are worth billions and billions and billions of dollars who then also like take loans out based on the amount of money that they have in assets that aren't taxed and then yeah there's use, a bunch yeah. of little tricks yeah. i mean you can even do it by accident people on wall street bets do this all the time where they'll blow like an insane amount of money and they're like well on the right side i don't have to pay taxes for the next 10 years because of all my <laughs> capital losses but uh yeah, anyway, yeah, Jeff Bezos, when he had just a measly $18 billion, uh, he got a helpful child tax credit yeah. from the IRS to uh, help raise his kids because, you know, you need all the help you can get when you're yes. just $18 billion. Now he has like three times, no, like 30 times that much. So uh, that would be like, that's, that's like anymore. the weird quandary, though, is it's like, okay, say Elliot uh, invested a million dollars into Dogecoin last year. Now that Doge, I, I have no idea the conversion or what even the rate is at, but now, but now you have technically fifty million dollars yeah. worth of Dogecoin, but it's you, it's not really fifty million dollars because yeah. it's just sitting in your Dogecoin in wallet. But if you got taxed on that, you'd owe twenty million dollars or something like that. But you can't pay it because you don't have the money. You'd have to actually liquidate it. But yeah. then if they taxed you on that and you held on to it, and then it crashed and you only had a million dollars, well, then, like what you never even had the money in the first place. Yeah, it's it's complicated, but yes, um, it's, there's, there's ways to there's go around it that doesn't fix screw re regular people. Yeah. yeah, these guys are all paying like one percent taxes. Yeah, but the ProPublica article uses the real tax rate, which is just like if they had all liquid assets, yeah. they would have to pay more. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Missing dog launched from vehicle during car accident found on a farm herding sheep. Like a week later, too. Yeah. They were just like, finally, I get to live the life like, I was always meant to live. car accident, like our border collie. We can't find it if anyone, and this fucking border collie did what border collies were bred over centuries to do. It found the nearest sheep farm and got to work. Yeah. And seemed to be really loving it. It was probably pissed off when parents... I know. It's just like, oh, fuck, now I gotta go just sit in yeah. a living room somewhere? Give me a job. Yeah. I was bred to do a job. M best week of its life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I... The coolest fucking thing I've ever seen on a trip, if you ever have the chance, if you're ever in a country, I did this in Ireland, but uh, any country that has a, uh, you know, that kind of sheep economy, uh, we, uh, we just like, we're looking at sheep farms all along our, our, our trip, our loop through Ireland, and we found one that uh, was literally, you show up, you pay the guy like 50 bucks, and he gives you a uh, like half hour demonstration of his, uh, of his dogs oh. doing... Uh, Doing herding, which is like the, these farmers, they'll, they'll compete in competitions for it. It was like the craziest fucking thing I've ever seen. You're on this like massive farm. And this guy's that got, guy must have thought you were a sucker. No, he was. It was. It was awesome. And like, well, good for him making the he, money uh, by just doing a, a, his job. Well, yeah, but like, you basically he explains like how they teach these dogs to do it. It's like the dog will be like five miles away. Yeah. But using just whistles, he can control the dog like he's controlling a fucking character in a video game. It's insane. And yeah, so, you've like, all seen video games. Well, have you seen this? Yeah, but like, yeah, just using some sounds. And like, also, it's like for one dog, it'll be 
a certain set of sounds and for another dog another set of sounds. But basically, like just visually or even like blind, you can you can get two or three dogs to herd a herd of like 500 sheep to a specific area. Yeah. Using just sound. It's incredible. Incredible. Sorry. Um, those, highly worth it. Those are the good boomers. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And he he was actually happy for the money because he said he's just of like. Of course he was. He's just like wool. Uh, you know, the wool wool doesn't go for as much these days. So. Yeah. Like and he's like, look, I got to herd these sheep anyway. Yeah. Why not get a bunch of slack jawed fucking Americans yeah. over here to watch how I do it? Yeah. It'll impress them. They're already wasted on Guinness. And he explained uh, the 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 you know black sheep or whatever. It actually you don't want black wool. It ru- it literally does ruin the entire batch because of a certain. Some substance, some chemical in the black fur mm-hmm. gets all over the white fur, the white wool, ruins it all. Yeah. So not just a, not just a saying. Black or sheep a movie. does ruin the bunch. Yeah. Jeffrey Tubin returns from Zoom Dick Exile. And he like got on and was just like, Yeah, I did it. I didn't think it was open. Yeah, we covered this, right? He uh Yeah, he fucking jacked he off. He was jacking it during a staff meeting for the New Yorker. But he didn't think the Zoom was on, but he was jerking off and just tubing it. Apparently, he was on a chat with someone that wasn't his wife. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> I think that was it. Yeah, and then uh, anyway, here here's the most awkward like minute and a half of CNN I've ever seen in my fucking life. Please enjoy. Let's bring in CNN chief legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin to talk about this and more. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello, Allison. It's been a while. It has been a while, indeed. I feel like we should address um, what's happened in the months since we've seen you, since some of our viewers may not know what has happened. So uh, I guess I'll recap. I'll do the honors. (laughs) Help yourself. Okay. (laughs) Um, In October, you were on a Zoom call with your colleagues from the New Yorker magazine. Everyone took a break for several minutes, during which time you were caught masturbating on camera. Uh, You were subsequently fired from that job after 27 years of working there. And you, since then, have been on leave from CNN. Do I have all that right? Um, you got it all right. Sad to say. Nunn admits to stealing over $835,000 from her school to help finance gambling habit, feds say. We covered this a while ago when it was like a, she was accused of doing yeah, it. Yeah, it was like this, two years ago. And yeah. I, I went back and checked. And uh, back then they said it was just half a million. Yeah. So they, they've uncovered even more spending from this old lady. I think she's 80 years old. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, look, to get away with it for as long as she did, to, to she get 835000 yeah. takes like a while. Over like 30 years. Yeah. She had she had bank accounts set up in the 80s before they digitized all their finances that like... I miss the old days. We get away with it. These were like secret bank accounts, but yeah. they were set up in the name of the school. So she would like get tuition checks and be like, all right, one for the school and one for me. One to go down to Morongo. Uh, yeah. And then she was just like always going on trips and living it up. Good for her. Uh, she might spend the rest of her life in prison now. Very short amount of time for her. But yeah, I mean, perfect time to get caught. Like, Right after she retired, she's old, you know. She's lived a great life, thanks to all that money she stole. So, yeah. whatever. Yeah. They'll give her a deck of cards while she's in prison. Yeah. As long as I can keep gambling. You guys want to play three-card money? You got bridge in a lady's prison? Yeah. Gambling can go very wrong in prison, I assume. It so can. So, she, she needs to be careful. It can. Yeah. Republican congressman suggests changing Moon's orbit to fight climate change. Yeah, this is Louis Gohmert just doing his, uh, his best Louis Gohmert. I got to give him credit, though. Acknowledged climate change. Just watch this clip. (laughs) I was uh, uh, informed by the immediate past director of NASA that they have found that the moon's orbit is changing slightly, and so is the Earth's orbit around the sun. Uh, We know there's been uh, significant solar flare activity. Um, And so is there anything that the National Forest Service or BLM can do to uh, change the course of the moon's orbit or the Earth's orbit around the sun, obviously that would have profound effects on our climate. I would have to follow up with you on that one, Mr. Gomert. Yeah. Yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah, that's um, great. This planet is fucked mm-hmm. officially. Well, you know, uh, at least he's out there spitballing. Spitballing ideas. You think we can maybe do something about that? Why don't I take a lasso and throw a a big old lasso around the moon? I'm trying to like, so like, he could be being facetious here, being like, well, 
two things. Like, all right, so they're saying it's like the moon's orbit. So that means not man-made climate change. It's just the moon's fault. Also, can we do anything about the moon? Yeah, I didn't think so. So nothing to see here. Yeah. I, I just, I, it's incredible. Yeah. This, this is the level of uh, scientific acumen we're dealing with in this country. <sighs> Disingenuous? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, final headline. Communism and Leninism to attend Younger Brother Socialism's wedding in India. Creative parents? Hardcore communist parents, yeah. Okay. Apparently communism is still very hot in the south of India, the uh, Tamil areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the dad, he had his kids like right around the fall of the USSR. He's just like, I kept hearing communism's dead. I'm like, well, how can communism be dead if he's right here? Yeah. Communism is a one-year-old Indian boy. Yep. And he just kept having kids, communism, Leninism, socialism. One of those kids had his own kid named Marxism, who okay. will also be attending the wedding. They call him Mark for short. Yeah, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Marky Marxism. And then Kami and uh, Lenin. Yeah. Yeah. Lenny. Yeah, Lenny. Yeah, they're going to have to like, I mean, uh, they're not a lot left. I guess there's like Maoist or just Mao. Yeah. Um, Got to watch out for uh, uh, libertarianism. Yeah, yeah, libertarianism is a real wild card. Especially at the wedding. Mm -hmm. Watch yeah. out. Running around don't let playing grab ass. Don't let libertarianism around your teenage kids. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a lot of weird ideas about consent. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, that's it for today's, uh, today's episode. Hope you enjoyed uh, watching. Please, if you haven't yet, check out our other episodes over here. Uh, Take this time and say, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe. And subscribe. hit that like button. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Go log into your parents' account. Subscribe from there. Leave a comment. Watch yeah. other videos over Just again. Just help that algorithm. Yeah. It's really hot, it's very uh, hot. here. And we're this week is a heat wave, and it's supposed to get up to 109. On it's going to be brutal. So um, as, a, as a gesture of, of friendship from you to us sweating, as we do every year in this tiny room, subscribe, leave a like. Yeah. Thank you. All right, we'll see you. Bye.